Hey guys, it's Jane. I'm back today. It's nearly the end of the month and I figure if I'm ever going to do a video about the Brothers Karamazov, it better be soon. So we're going to have a stab at it today. Um, I'm not going to be calling this a review because um, although my hubris quotient is high, I don't think... <laughs> I don't think it's sufficiently high enough for me to consider that I could review one of the great novels of all literature. Um, but I'm going to have a stab at uh, talking about it in a meaningful way and some of my reflections on it. Trying really hard not to not to drop spoilers, especially for the second half, because the second half is basically a murder mystery. You know. There is actually possible full-on spoilers. I found a really interesting essay written by David Foster Wallace. A lot of what he's talking about really speaks to me, so I thought I'd just read an excerpt of this now. It's true that there are features of Dostoevsky's books that are alien and off-putting. Russian is notoriously hard to translate into English, and when you add to this difficulty the archaisms of 19th century literary language, Dostoevsky's prose dialogue can often come off mannered and silly. Plus, there's the stiltedness of the culture Dostoevsky's characters inhabit. When people are ticked off, for instance, they do things like shake their fists or call each other scoundrels or fly at each other. Speakers use exclamation points in quantities now seen only in comic strips. Social etiquette seems stiff to the point of absurdity. People are always calling on each other and being received or not being received and obeying Rococo conventions of politeness even when they are enraged. Everybody's got a long, hard-to-pronounce last name and a Christian name plus a patronymic plus sometimes a diminutive so you almost have to keep a chart of characters' names. Obscure military ranks and bureaucratic hierarchies abound, plus there are rigid and totally weird class distinctions that are hard to keep straight and understand the implications of. The point is that it's not just the death by canonization thing. There is real and alienating stuff that stands in the way of our appreciating Dostoevsky and has to be dealt with. But the larger point, which, yes, may be kind of obvious, is that some art is worth the extra work of getting past all the impediments to the appreciation. And Dostoevsky's books are definitely worth the work. And this is not just because of his bestriding the Western canon. If anything, it's despite that. For one thing that canonization and course assignments obscure is that Dostoevsky isn't just great, he's also fun. His novels almost always have ripping good plots, lurid and intricate and thoroughly dramatic. There are murders and attempted murders and police and dysfunctional family feuding and spies and tough guys and beautiful fallen women and unctuous con men and wasting illnesses and sudden inheritances and silky villains and scheming and whores. Okay, that was an excerpt of David Foster Wallace on Dostoevsky. Now, clearly David Foster Wallace has thought a bit about Dostoevsky. In fact, um... I've read one uh, reviewer that claims of the Incandens of Family um, out of Infinite Jest is based on uh, the Karamazov family from the brothers Karamazov. And um, he makes a number of points there that there are real difficulties in getting to grips with these books and yet they are in fact incredibly readable <laughs> if you can push through some of the difficulties. And the Brothers Karamazov in particular uh, has an, a number of amazing elements. Um, I, and I read another article which called the Brothers Karamazov the first ever police procedural. And in fact, the whole second half of the book almost reads like a script out of Law and Order. <laughs> you have police, you have crime, you have all these different characters in the courtroom. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, um, chung chung, that's, that's what the second half of the book feels like. Uh, the first half of the book uh, felt less like a TV uh, drama to me and more like a play. You have lots of people coming on stage 
and being given set piece speeches that describe themselves or their point of view about the world. The episodic nature of the book I've also read is based on uh, Dostoevsky's real love and passion for Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens was one of Dostoevsky's favourite authors and in lots of ways he um, was trying to write Dickensian fiction. Uh, whether or not that's achieved, I will leave to somebody else to judge. Uh, another simile that I've heard that really rang true with me is that reading these books is a lot like watching a Woody Allen movie, that you have incredibly wordy characters, that almost everybody is is ridden with angst, and you have these deeply neurotic women. <laughs> And as a side note, I think I could probably make an entire video just about the women in the Brothers Karamazov. There are no like super main characters who are female, but there are three really important female characters. Katerina, who is Dmitri's fiance and the love of Ivan's life. Grishenka, who is um, the, the love of Dimitri's life and also the person that their father, Fyodor, is lusting after. And Lise, uh, Lise, who is kind of the romantic interest for Alexei, the youngest brother, and who is a whole mystery in and of herself. The episodic nature um, of the book also leads to the fact that there are a, a number of sections that are actually often drawn out and dealt with separately as separate works. The most significant of these, Ivan tells to Alexei, I think it's supposed to be a, a poem that he has, that Ivan has written and he shares this with Alexei and it's called The Grand Inquisitor. It's a really quite disturbing thought experiment in theodicy, which is a Christian discipline, which is about asking the question of how do you square a good, powerful God with the pain and evil uh, in the world? The Grand Inquisitor is just one of the most disturbing examples of uh, an attempt at a theodicy that I've ever read. And it, in some ways, it's an anti theodicy because, of course, you're Ivan's relationship with faith is one of the really interesting questions that arises in the book as well. This is, of course, another whole kettle of fish in this book. One of the many things that I'd heard about this book before I read it was that it was one of the great Christian novels, uh, that Dostoevsky had written a book largely about questions of faith. And I've got to say yes and no to this. It is certainly a book that uh, addresses questions of faith, but the flavour of the sort of faith worldview or whatever that you're getting off this is very close to and deeply informed by Christianity, but it certainly is, is a version rather than um, straight down the line orthodox Christian thinking and teaching, um, which is interesting and um, certainly legitimate. Uh, he, he is not uh, anti-Christian in any way. In fact, I, I really appreciated the way that he drew, especially all the characters at the monastery, which is a major uh, scene for action in the first half of the book. The monastery is just full of crazy things, uh, fruitcake people and really warped people and a number of quite corrupt careerist people, but that is not all. It has all those things, but it is still a place where there is genuine love and piety and devotion. So those things Dostoevsky's drawn this world where those things live together rather than cancelling one another out. And I thought that was uh, that was something that was so sophisticated about the way that he was looking at faith. He certainly wasn't it's it's not a book where the Christians or the church people are all the good guys by any means. And yet 
by the end of the book, almost every remaining character has had some sort of crisis of faith and become some sort of believer. Uh, so, yes, it is a book that deals with spiritual issues, but there's much more than that going on as well. Um, uh, one of the other really commonly worked over themes is about Russianness and what it is to be Russian, um, usually in contradistinction to European. Being European is not really a great thing as far as Dostoevsky is concerned, and, and especially French. The French get a bit of a drubbing in this, um, and anybody with connections with France is, is, is obviously suspect. There is a German character who is seen as a bit of a buffoon, but he's not evil so maybe being German is a little bit better than being French I, I'm not sure but certainly being Russian is clearly the most important thing that you could be but everybody is running around with competing ideas about what being Russian actually means and um, yeah this is this is clearly something that uh, given the historical context that the book was written in um, was a really live issue and it's something that's wrestled with but I don't know that there's ever actually a final answer arrived at in the book. The other, probably the biggest theme in the book is about family. Uh, the Karamazov family, almost any way that you could think of a family could be dysfunctional, this family is dysfunctional. But there are other family groups that are shown throughout the story that are kind of held up as counterexamples. The way the book finishes, it seems to be making a statement that the major overriding theme of the book is about families and about how families should work. <laughs> Despite the fact that the book is constantly, constantly being dragged down into the mud with this family that is clearly not working. So that's um, some of the stuff that the book is talking about. But for me, the, um, the thing that has stayed with me the most is the characters and especially the brothers, the family, the Karamazovs. So probably not so much the father because he is almost a cartoon villain who is sort of there to kind of create the problem that the rest of the book is about. He's, he is a buffoon. He is sometimes it's almost demonic. Um, and yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's not like any real person that you could meet. I don't think like I, I, I would really hope not. But then there's the three and a half brothers who are the real heart of the story. So there is um, Dimitri, Ivan and Alexei, the three legitimate brothers. And then there's Shmerdikov, who is, uh, works as a servant to the, to the um, Karamazov family, but is widely rumoured and he kind of believes is actually the illegitimate son of Theodore. So that's why I've been talking about three and a half Karamazov brothers. So these um, characters are incredibly finely drawn and well-rounded and living, but they are also allegory. A number of times in the court case, different people draw them like they are a parable. And you can see that that was put there intentionally. So Dimitri, the oldest brother, uh, to my mind, he is, he is the stomach. <laughs> he runs on appetite. He's into wenching and gambling and drinking. He's always after money. He went into the army. He's an officer in the army and uh, he spends his days trying to look grand and make himself, you know, esteemed in his society. So he's, he is sort of an epitomization of appetite. Then you have Ivan, who is the brain. And Ivan is the scholar. And he is very careful about all of his dealings. Uh, he has uh, reached a certain level of um, fame for a, an article that he wrote that was published 
Um, he aspires to be respected, but not as a you know manly man, but as a intellect, somebody uh, to be reckoned with. Dimitri and Ivan's relationships with women are controlled by these paradigms as well. I, Ivan is in love with Katerina. Dimitri's um, fiance, but not only can he not really tell her about it, he can hardly even recognize it in himself. And then we have Alexei, who is to who we're told throughout the whole thing is the hero of the piece, and he he I guess is the heart. Um, Alexei, in a way, is less realistic. I guess, than the other two because Alexei almost always does the right thing. I mean, sometimes he gets tired and and he can't achieve everything that he wants to on a particular day, but you never see Alexei doing something mean. Um, and a lot of his role in the, in, the, in the book is just listening to other people. But constantly we are pointed to Alexei as a good example, as somebody who is redeeming the situation that they're put in as distinct from the other two brothers who in their own ways have just been foolish and and whose lives are no longer working as a result. Smirnikov, the, uh, the, the half-brother, what can you say about Smirnikov? He is quite possibly one of the most creepy characters that I've ever read. This didn't occur to me while I was reading the book, but I read an article which posed the question of whether Shmerdikov was actually supposed to be the devil in this book. And in a way that makes sense to me. The other thing about Shmerdikov, which I learned after finishing the book, uh, one of the things about Shmerdikov is he's epileptic. And in fact, Dostoevsky himself suffered from epilepsy. And I, I just think it's so interesting. He was clearly writing Smirnikov in some ways as a facet of himself and to put himself into the story as the devil is just such, I, I just, I don't even really know what to do with that. So there you go. Um, why might you want to read this book? <sighs> It's a lot of work. It really is a lot of work. But I am really glad that I finally finished it. Uh, and I don't think that is entirely because that's now a relief that I can knock that off the bucket list. I, the, clearly there's an element of that. But it's such a rich book with so much going on and I'm sure that there are elements of this that I'm going to return to and chew over um, for years to come. I don't have any way to conclude this video. Um, I don't have any sort of uh, perfect snappy encapsulation to put at the end. Um, what I would say is that I would so be interested to uh, discuss with anybody else who's read this book um, uh, really anything to do with it. It's the kind of book that you've, once I've finished it, well, once I fin immediately finished it, I just wanted to not think about it for a couple of days and just bask in the article of having finished it. But since then, I've been struggling because I really want to talk to somebody about it. Um, and this is part of the reason why I've been looking up, looking up, looking up articles and searching, seeing what other people have written about it, because it feels like something I just need to process by talking to somebody else. So I would really appreciate it uh, if you've read this book to uh, comment down below and maybe we can get into some sort of Dostoevsky off. That'd be great. Anyway, I hope you're all well. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.